Hi, Gary Madsen, owner of UTV Service here in Salt Lake City, Utah. Spring ratings on a 2017 Polaris XP1000 two-seat machine with second-generation Walker Evans Spriggs factory. The single spring on the front, the rear spring had a tender spring, and these are going to be the spring ratings of what came off with it, and it's got right at 2,000 miles. Are your springs totally junk on the UTV that you get from st stock? And today we're going to go over uh, a rating of the springs on what's on there from the stock to compare it to a dual rate springs. And, and let's talk about what it, whether these springs are completely junk or not. One of the things that you know you hear about is, oh, there's completely junk springs out there on the UTVs. You need to just get rid of them. And I kind of look at it as some of them are definitely a junk spring, but they still have a spring rating. So in order to understand if they're really junk or not, let's, let's find out what the spring ratings are and we'll, we'll go from right. there. Here's a rear spring and how they rate springs is for once it's loaded, one inch of movement, how much pounds per square inch does it take to move that one inch movement? So on my spring rate tester, it tells you, here's the rating and here's my, how much it's gonna move. So on this spring, I've got it set up with a preload on it. And now I'm gonna crank it down one inch and we're gonna see what this spring rating is right now. All right, we've gone one inch right at 204 pounds, we're gonna call that a 200 pound spring. So right now, we've got a 200 pound rear spring. spring. This is the tender spring that comes stock with it. This rating is so little, it's not even worth talking about. It's more there just to keep everything together when you go to full droop. It doesn't start banging around. When it's on compression, it's completely collapsed, so we're not even gonna consider this a spring. So this 200 pound spring is going to be what is rated for, it don't matter whether it's slow bumps, high speed bumps, everything. The 200 pound rear spring is gonna have to handle it all. We're gonna compress it. I've got it all set up. I've got a preload on it. Got it zeroed out here. Here's my inch that we're moving. Here's the spring pressure rate. So I'm going to go down one inch. So we know that we've gone one inch of movement. This is a 149 pound spring. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, okay, let's round it off. It's a 150 pound spring. So the front stock Walker Evan spring coming off of this razor is 150 pounds. That's the single spring. This does have the overload. It's still compressing right now. That's almost fully compressed. We're only doing 150 pounds. On conclusion on some of this spring testing, this front spring on the stock is the lightest one I've ever done. So my, my conclusion on this one, this one is a junk spring. Normally the fronts are 250 pounds or so. So we're actually definitely too light. So I'm, putting, I'm installing a nice dual rate kit with the springs made from Eibach. It's a Schmitty racing suspension kit. And we went with the medium duty. And so now measuring all those, I could go through and measure all those for you, but here's what you wanna know. Right now, we're working with 150 pound stock front spring, so we're gonna work on the fronts. When I've got the dual rate spring kit on the front of this vehicle, it, it, it's going to be 172 pounds at a low speed which is higher than this one, but that's only because this is already junk and it's lower and it, bought, it for sure should be. And, but when it hits the bumps and it, you go to a compressed where it crossover rings become a factor, you work just the bottom spring, then we're going to a 300 pound spring and that's gonna stop you from bottoming out. And that's what the whole idea between a dual rate kit is, small bumps, 172 pounds, ham them, no problem. The large bumps, all of a sudden you go to a 300 pound spring. Where right now, 
with this spring that I feel is junk, you're going to be 150 pounds no matter what. So you're going to be so it's going to be a good little soft ride, but believe me, it is going to bottom out at 150 pounds on the front. You're going to bottom this thing out if you're loaded with two people and you're hitting anything. So that's an advantage over the front spring. So now let's talk about the rear spring. Here's the rear spring on the XP 1000 we're dealing with. It's rated right at 200 pounds. Okay, so now this 200 pound spring from stock is going to handle your soft ride at 200 pounds, and then it's going to handle your heavier hits at it's a 200 pound spring. It doesn't change, so it's going to be the same spring. So what they've done is they put a middle ground to have the good ride possible and yet still stop the hits. The, the spring dual rate that I'm going to is going to be rated at, when they're working on the dual rates, is going to be a 136 pound rate under the small bumps, and this is for the rear, so it'll be 136 pounds will be the activating on the low speed, smaller whoops, smaller bumps, and so it's going to feel good. But when it comes in contact with the crossover rings, when you've hit something harder, or it's gone into some more suspension movement, it's going to step into a 300 pound spring. Again, to stop that coming down to a hard salt. So now, instead of 200 pounds that you're going to bottom out, you're going to be in contact with a 300 pound spring and that's going to stop you from bottoming out and the bottoming out is not what you want to do when you're hitting hard bumps. You want that suspension to be moving. So in the conclusion of the dual rate spring kit versus the single rate, you get two worlds of different springs where from stock you only get one. Now is a 200 pound spring stock bad on a rear of a two seater? I don't consider that a bad spring. Is this 150 pound spring front one on there? I feel that's gone weak. That, the fronts are almost always heavier than the rears. So I definitely feel like this spring has gone weak on this. And this is about a, it's a three year old vehicle, almost four with a little over 2000 miles. I got to believe this spring is on the junk side. So this should be a, a major improvement. The more dual rate kits I start putting on, the more I kind of start seeing where it makes sense on what we're after and especially riding styles, which anybody that's selling the spring kit will tell you that and show you that. Um, but, but the reality is 90% of the people that's calling me up, emailing me, asking about dual rate spring kits or what should I do? They're asking for a better, softer ride. They specify they don't jump. They really don't do a whole bunch of high speed. So the majority of the people I work with and all the clients is they are looking for a better ride. I think to make the wife happy, I've always said that. Happy wife, happy life. And that makes it for the Razor for sure. Doesn't matter what's a Razor, Can-Am. You name it, 900 Razor can be much better improved ride. All right, this is the 2017 Polaris XP 1000 two seater that we just got done rebuilding all the four Walker Evans shocks. This has got the new Schmitty Racing dual rate spring kits on front and rear with crossover rings all set. It came in here the rear shocks were actually had nitrogen inside the shock housing on both of them. Couldn't have been doing much on the shocks. Uh, after we get those rebuilt, we put the spring kit in. We started off, it had 11 inches of ride height on the back and 13 on the front. With the bigger tires and everything now, we've got a nice 14 and a half inches front and rear. And that's where we're going to start this to get a better idea of what's going on here how we feel this should be a major improvement on this ride. Um, it's, it's a nice suspension upgrade. It's a lot has to do with maintenance, but the dual rate spring kit is going to give him a softer ride over the smaller bumps and get you, get him a firmer ride as soon as he hits some hard bumps 
to stop it with the main spring on the bottom. So pretty excited to see how this turns out. Uh, got a, he's got a test drive for this at the end of the month here. This is December 2020, the pandemic year. And pretty excited about this, came out great. I just wanna say thanks for watching on the UTV service. Please hit the subscribe button below if you like what you're seeing. I'm gonna put out more videos.